Are you a gunboat or a raft? The Lord says. And seeing them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and intending to pass them by. Long verses only need short explanations, for they already have the explanation within themselves. But short verses need longer explanations, because firstly, they do not contain an explanation in their short nature, and secondly, their light is usually pressed together and locked up. That is why it needs more effort to free their whole light than with longer verses, which are shining bright enough already in their position. For this reason, I cannot give you an extended explanation of the present text, because its light is very strong already. And if you would think about it just a little bit, you yourself must be able to grasp it with your hands and feet at the same time. But for you to understand this, I want to give you just a little hint, and then you will understand this text more than enough. And therefore, listen now. The sea is the world. The troubling winds are the doings of the world and its desires and lusts, against which a right skipper has to fight until the fourth night watch, which represent the final days of his life, meaning his entire life, because the night signifies the material life on earth. The Lord is not in the boat. Why not? Because he is not in the world. For the ship represents the man living in the world, and the Lord is not with him because of his freedom. But the Lord still follows the skipper, and he's walking across the waves of the world, as if they were dry land. He does not care about the skippers on the sea. Wherever he meets one, he just passes by, so that he does not bother the skipper in his freedom. But when he meets a boat that carries his disciples, people who recognize him and call on him, he then comes closer to the boat even though he would normally just pass by it, because the boat carries already his disciples, or in these men rests a heart that loves the Lord and believes in him and calls on him already. At first, the heart is afraid of him and thinks he is a phantom, which means a person which is still filled with wrong perceptions about me and thinks it's impossible or even a chimera, illusion or figment, that I could come closer to him in the world and even step on his boat. However, if his love does not diminish because of this, I will come closer to his boat and make myself known. And once he has heard my voice, when I say to him, Do not be afraid, for it is me, your master, your lord, your god and father. Then the fear of the phantom will surely vanish, and the man will welcome me onto his boat with the greatest joy. See, this already is the entire explanation of the text. Only one question remains, namely, what is required of the boat which carries my disciples? Is it a scholarly built steamship, or is it a battleship with three masts equipped with 160 cannons, or a frigate, a schooner, a brig, or maybe even a heavily loaded market ship? Oh no, all these kinds of ships do not carry my disciples. These I usually evade widely, so that they won't even perceive me as a phantom. Who would ever want to come close to a ship that is equipped with cannons anyway? Their protector is death, but the ships who have death as their guardian will surely go before death, because death has nothing to fear from death. But where death surrounds a ship far and wide, firing range of the cannons, there life is passing by far away. But how then must the ship look which carries my disciples? I tell you, extraordinarily simple. A simple raft, just a few wooden beams tied together, where the skippers are just a few feet above the sea level, at most. It may not have any sails, so that it cannot be mastered by the winds of the world. 
but just concrete rudders on each side, so that it can be moved everywhere freely by the will of the navigators, untouched by the winds of the world. When I step onto such a humble boat, I will recognize it as such a boat, which carries my disciples. I will approach such a boat and step on it. Why? Firstly, because such a boat does not move so fast, because it does not have sails or a steam engine, but rather only rudders, with which not a lot of speed can be built up, and thus I can catch up to it more easily. Secondly, such a boat is not surrounded by death, whose friend I, as the life myself, am not. And thirdly, such a boat can be stepped upon very easily and without a lot of effort, for it is almost on sea level. I am not a friend of great efforts, indeed. What cannot happen very easily, almost by itself, I am not letting go, how it goes. You will easily understand. Why? Because every person has complete freedom, which will never be deterred by me. Wherever I find such a low boat upon the shaking waves of the world, which can be boarded comfortably, and if I am recognized, I will step upon it, even if I were willing to pass by. And once I am in the boat, the day is coming immediately, and during day, the safe shore can be easily spotted, and I, as a good captain, will for sure not miss the shore. I mean, you will understand this explanation. Therefore, step upon such a boat as well, the lower the better and I will also approach this little boat and completely board it. Amen.